Voice chat in games is beautifully ugly. More ugly than anything, but it has its moments. <laughs> kind of cool that you can witness a single mother into a 14 year old about how her life is in shambles while doing a Roblox hobby. If you've never witnessed or partaken in anything like this, you truly haven't delved deep enough into game chats. How did we get to the point where you could boot up something like Fortnite and witness a domestic abuse case going on on the other end of a mic? Very specific question, but I'm glad you asked. First game to implement voice chat was in 2001. The game was called Alien Front Online. It was for the Dreamcast. You had a little microphone accessory that you had to plug directly into the console to talk to anyone. It's from this game that released two years prior called Seaman. Seaman, you take care of this little affront to God. You talk to him or something, I don't know. He looks like he's not allowed within 50 feet of a school. Being 2001, internet wasn't the fastest thing as you can imagine especially on the dreamcast in alien front online you press y and you get five to ten seconds to say the most racist and or homophobic thing that comes to your mind after that little timer is up there's yet another delay before your teammates can hear you only one person can talk at a time there is so much delay that you really can't get conversations in i like to imagine that this went kind of like a verbal game of chess i fornicated with your mother dude my mom's dead yeah, she died of exhaustion in the bed last night. <laughs> Shortly after the execs of PlayStation and Xbox saw how mind-numbingly novel the concept of game chat was, they wanted a slice of the pie. Naturally, PC beat them to the punch. I like Counter-Strike, so let's talk about that. Wish chat was implemented later in 2001. It made the lesser brain-dead teammates seem a little bit more tolerable. Jokes aside, voice chat did add a competitive viability that wasn't really there with randoms beforehand. This also ushered in a new era of online funny interactions. Door stuck! Door stuck! One of the next major series to pick up voice chat was COD. From what I've seen, Xbox 360 was impacted the most. Hot take, but I genuinely think that some kids on COD hated minorities more than 1600 slave owners. Unfortunately, I was really sheltered as a kid and wasn't allowed to partake in voice chats until I was 12. I didn't get to witness the cesspool that was heyday COD lobbies. I was busy doing other stuff. Mom, stop knocking! I'm leave me alone, I'm doing other stuff. <laughs> One thing jumps to another, and now most online games have game chat. You get Counter Strike, COD, Halo, Sea of Thieves, Gay Sex Legends, Skibbity Fortnite, and one of my favorites, Roblox. Keep your horses held. I don't want to hear that Roblox is a kids game. Big kids can play it too and pedophiles. Maybe it wasn't the brightest idea to add voice chat to a kid's game, but the floodgates have opened and there's no turning back. That's one thing the game chats have unfortunately enabled. Luckily, this has also had the inverse effect and has tipped people off to very questionable behavior. And hey, you can get some stuff that sticks with you permanently. Aside from trauma, I found albums that I love that were recommended by randoms. Kind of crazy that I can load something up and talk to someone from the other side of the world. I can boot up something like Counter-Strike in the US and lecture a middle-aged man from Birmingham about why America is the best country. You don't have freedom, dude. You aren't allowed guns. Your Walmarts don't sell guns. You don't even have Walmarts. It's pretty much a third world country, dude. The thing that makes Game Chat so special is the anonymity of it and the unlikelihood of ever seeing the same person twice. You could act any way you feel with a little to no intervention depending on the game. You could be the mom trauma dumping a 14 year old. Or you could be having a good time making everyone laugh. Or you could be screaming and flinging doo-doo feces at the wall like a chimp fancy because your teammate couldn't find to fuse the bomb in time. Sometimes this means that you get a very unfiltered version of someone. Sometimes the filter is magnified and you get someone that's nowhere near the same as they are in real life. The weird thought is that every single person you've ever interacted with online has their own personal life. All you know is what they display in that session. I feel like a lot of people don't understand that nowadays, especially on Twitter. You really never know what someone is like unless you've been talking to them for ages, and even then they could just lie. But in terms of game chats, you only get a brief look at someone. One time, a group of friends and I convinced this guy to ask a girl out in Roblox. In less than an hour, we were in a different Roblox game witnessing their marriage. Another time, this guy started singing and strumming his guitar, and he had a whole concert. So many people gathered around to listen to him, and now he has some loyal fans. The first ever game that I was allowed to interact with strangers on was the Xbox version of Minecraft. Me and my siblings would play split screen Hunger Games, and we'd communicate through chat and add people to parties so we could talk to them. You never really know what to expect when you join a game chat. One of those Hunger Game lobbies, I met one of my oldest online friends, like we still talk almost every single day. Go be fun in a voice chat somewhere, make someone else laugh. Most people have a story about a weird character they met in a game chat, go be someone else's story.